What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. A few weeks ago, I posted this video breaking down my process for determining if a property is a deal or no deal. You guys really liked that video, so today we're back at it again with another property that I have under contract. I gave you guys a sneak preview of this property a few days ago on my Instagram Live, so make sure you follow at Lily Invest so that you can be involved in more content there. But in today's video, let's go even deeper. We'll talk about how I found this deal, what are the property rehab needs, break down all of the numbers involved, including the ARV, the rehab budget, the closing costs, the fees, the interest, everything. And at the end, you can share your thoughts and read other people's opinions in the comment section. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Lily, and the goal of this channel is to document my real estate investing journey and bring you guys along with me. I want this channel to be the number one place for new investors to learn and get high quality, authentic content. And if you agree with me, the best way to let me know and to let the YouTube algorithm know is to change the color of the like button. It really does help the channel a ton, so I appreciate you hitting that thumbs up button. Let's get started. <laughs> So first off, this is a deal that I do not intend to wholesale. And there's really two reasons for that. The main reason is that I would like to keep this property and renovate it myself or in partnership with one of my cash buyers. And the second reason is that although it's a pretty good deal, there's not a ton of meat on the bone for a flipper to make a profit and to pay a wholesale fee, but it could be a really good deal since I found it myself that I don't have to you know, pay a wholesale fee to someone else. So it could be a really good deal for me to flip it, but we'll get into all of the numbers here in a moment. This is a property that I've had my eye on for quite a while. And you can see that just looking at the pictures, it's really not in bad condition at all. Sure, this kitchen could use a little bit of sprucing up. Um, the bathrooms could use a little bit of sprucing up as well, but there's not a lot of damage. Really, there's two main reasons that this property is an as-is sale and is in need of a cash purchase rather than someone who's just a retail buyer and wants to live in this house coming in buying it with a loan. So first, when you walk into the property, you see that the entrance to the downstairs bedroom is kind of off to the right. And this is actually a problem because the entrance to the downstairs bathroom is actually on the opposite side of the house on the left. And so you can imagine that in the middle of the night, if you wake up and you have to use the restroom, you would actually have to walk out of that bedroom, through the living room, through the kitchen, all the way around to get to the bathroom. And so the door to that bedroom needs to be moved to the opposite side of the wall so that the person's bedroom door is right next to the bathroom door. So that needs to be fixed. The second issue is that the steps that lead to the upstairs bedroom and bathroom are very, very steep. The upstairs area used to be an attic and the previous owner finished out that space and it looks really nice but in order to get up there, these steps go basically straight up and down. So the plan A solution that we have to fix these two issues is first to get a landing for the stairs. So rather than extending them out to where it would interfere with getting into the bedroom door, we're actually just going to make them less steep and use a landing that kind of turns out into the living room. So that'll fix the stair issue. Then to fix the bedroom issue, we're gonna move the closet. We're also going to move the laundry hookups that are on the other side of that wall where the closet is and put a bedroom door so that the person can get out of their bedroom and into the bathroom. Now, a lot of you gave me some really good suggestions over on Instagram. This is only plan A though, because you never know what's gonna happen when you open up the doors, but this is the plan right now. Other than those two main items, the rest of the renovation budget would be going towards painting the kitchen cabinets, which are basically new, but still in kind of their bare wood color. We would also add some new kitchen countertops, as well as possibly donate or sell the existing kitchen appliances to install new stainless steel appliances. The bathrooms need mirrors and just some general sprucing up, and the bedrooms need new carpet and possibly a new coat of paint. On the outside of the house, there is a huge front yard, so some nice landscaping could be really good for the curb appearance and we also want to add a pop of color to the house by adding some window trim and also painting the front door. If you guys have suggestions of what color paint you think would look good on the front door, definitely comment them below. The jury is still out on if we're going to need to add a new roof or not, but we have worked that into the rehab budget just in case, and we will definitely need to trim up some of the trees. So now that you know what the needs of the house are, let's look into all of the numbers associated with the deal. The house was initially listed at $137,000 when it came on the market back in October. And I believe around that time I offered around 100 or $110,000 and the seller rejected it and did not counter. 
After a few months of the house not selling, the owner lowered the price to 131,000 and then to 127,000. And the entire time I just kept offering 100,000. Don't worry, I'll tell you why I was stuck on that number in a moment. Eventually, after five months of me just offering over and over again and the property not selling to anyone else, the seller countered my offer of 100,000 with 106,000. So the question now is, how do you know if $106,000 for this property is a good deal? First, you need to run your comps and estimate the ARV or the after repair value of the property. This is something that takes practice. And if you wanna learn my system and do a bunch of practice problems with me on Zoom, you should sign up for my five-day beginner's bootcamp, which is an entire week of working with me live on Zoom to put together all the pieces you need to start doing wholesaling deals consistently every single month. For this property, I was able to find quite a few comps that put my ARV right at $170,000. I also estimated that this would be a light slash medium rehab, which put my rehab budget at right at $25,000. Here I have a deal calculator that my brother helped me build that I use on every single deal and is also provided as a bonus for those who attend the five day beginners boot camp on Zoom. Once all of my numbers were plugged in, I could see that the seller's counter offer of $106,000 put this at a quote unquote 76% deal. And I know that in this part of town, most investors are aiming to be somewhere between 75 and 80% with their deals. It also put my profit for the deal at about 15 to $20,000, depending on some other factors that we'll discuss in a moment. So that $106,000 counter offer worked for my numbers. And so I accepted it with the seller. Now the question though, is do I need to be able to come up with all of the cash needed for the deal? That $106,000 plus the money needed for the rehab, the closing costs, and just other things associated with flipping a property? The answer is no. I can partner with a local cash buyer who also does some hard money lending and they can provide me with most of the funds needed for this deal. Here's a breakdown of how it might work. So we need $106,000 for the purchase, $25,000 for the rehab, and then let's say $2,000 for the closing costs and some utilities and other things like that for a month while we're renovating the property. So that's $133,000 needed to actually flip this property. Hard money lenders have different amounts of cash that they'll lend as well as different interest rates that they give and that's based on a lot of different factors. In this case, I will get the loan for $90,000 and while these hard money lender rates can be anywhere between eight to 12%, let's just use 10% as a good average here. So they'll give me $90,000 for the loan. I need the other $43,000, which would put us at the $133,000 to purchase and rehab the property. But there are other costs involved, so let's do an entire rundown. Let's start from the end. When we sell the property for the $170,000 that we're aiming for, we've gotta take out that $133,000 that we spent not only on the purchase, the 106 of the purchase, but also the rehab and the closing costs. So now we're at $37,000, but we need to keep in mind that when you sell a property, you're gonna pay realtor commissions, and that's usually around 6% of the purchase price. So in this case, about $10,000. So now we're down to $27,000, and we also wanted to add a 10% overage, just kind of contingency plan for the rehab budget. So with our $25,000 rehab budget, we also added a 10% extra, so that's $2,500 that we take away, just in case our rehab goes a bit over. So that takes us to $24,500, but remember that I still need to repay the interest on the loan. So we're estimating that this is gonna be a super quick rehab, should only take about a month, but either way, when you're dealing with hard money lenders, they may have a minimum amount of interest that needs to be paid for any loan. In this case, this lender requires at least three months of interest to be paid, even if you finish the renovation quicker than that. So that would be $750 a month times three months, which puts us at $2,250 of interest paid but we also have to pay another $2,000 as an origination fee, which is kind of just like a baseline fee for the hard money lender to do this loan. So all in all, about $4,250 are going to be going to the cash buyer partner slash hard money lender in the forms of interest and fees. So once all of that is paid, what's left over is my profit. And that is an estimate right now of about $20,250. So again, we sell the property for $170,000 and then all of our fees are added together including an extra 2,500 just in case our rehab budget goes over. That adds up to $149,750 of fees, which leaves me with a profit of $20,250. If we divide that $20,250 of profit by the $43,000 that I had to put into the deal, that gives me a 47% return in just one month. And whether you think 47% is really good or not, just remember that the stock market on average returns about 7%. So this is one of the reasons that people really like 
like real estate. But you've also gotta be thinking about what are the risks involved with the deal, especially when you're borrowing money and you're expected to pay back that money. And if you don't, then you also are racking up interest. So tell me what you guys think, deal or no deal? Is there anything that you're worried about? Is there anything you think that the property needs that I didn't list here? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And of course, if I decide to move forward with this video, you guys will be right there along with me, both here on YouTube and over on Instagram at Lily Invest. I look forward to reading your comments and until next time, thanks for watching.